Last question, and this is really a good one. Why are you doing this? Why? <laughs> well, you have to think about it. I didn't come out until I was 55 years old. I knew there was something different about me when I was five to six years old, but that was back in 1962. And trans children just did not come out. You didn't go to your parents when you were five or six years old and say, I want to be a girl, because they would just laugh at you and say, oh yeah, of course you want to be a girl. And then if you came out a little later and said, I want to be a girl, you'd probably get slapped or smacked or spanked or what have you. Let's keep in mind, in the 1960s, homosexuality, lesbianism, and transgenderism were considered psychological abnormalities. You were crazy. Uh, I think, I'd have to go and check, I haven't done my research, but I think in the DRM-10, uh, transgenderism is still kind of listed as a psychological abrogation, but they're taking that out. So we will eventually join the, the gays and lesbians and the bisexual people and the asexual and the genderqueer and whatever you want that we're no longer psychologically aberrant. This is our lives. Why do you want to do this? Because I face a lot of hurdles. Well, no one at work knows I'm out yet. Next year they will. I'm going to go through and get my name changed. I'm going to get my gender, um, gender markers changed as well. So by this time next year I will be considered legally female and I will be considered legally Cassie or Cassidy. That will be my name. I'll have everything change, my driver's license, my social security, I'll need a new passport, uh, all my financial records will be changed, all my tax records will be changed, everything. It'll, it's a long drawn out process. It takes months to complete. But there are a lot of places that still look down upon trans people, both men and women. And there is a distinct possibility that um, once I come out at work, they're not going to want me back. There's also a distinct possibility that even after 30 years plus of being a computer programmer, no one's going to want to hire me. I mean, who wants to hire uh, at that time? It'll eventually be a 58-year-old trans woman to come and program their computers. It doesn't matter that I have all this experience. That hasn't changed. Uh, there will be some prejudices, there will be, I so far have been lucky, and I usually just laugh it off if someone stares at me like, you know, look who's here, the freak show, I just, <laughs> yeah, haters keep hating, no problem. So why do I want to do this? Because the alternative is not pleasant. You reach a point in your life where it just becomes too difficult to go on. I've known I've been trans, like I said, since I was about five or six years old. I've had two failed suicide attempts, both of them when I was in my late teens. I, at one point in my life, tried seriously to drink myself to death. I have been in situations that you could almost call life or death and I didn't care if I lived or died. Uh, in fact, one of those situations, I actually had a guy in a bar stick a gun to my head and I sat there, looked straight ahead and told him, go ahead and pull the trigger, I don't care. Uh, I've not liked myself for the longest time because I was wrong and I hated it. So it used to be that you had two paths you went down. On one hand you had still keep hiding and maybe try to convince myself that there's I'm not really transgender that this is all a fetish I like wearing women's clothes because of you know sexual things that sort that sort of stuff and some people do that they, they try to convince themselves that no nah, I'm not really transgender I'm a cross-dresser you know, I don't really wear women's clothes because I'm a woman I wear it because I like it or on the other hand you can kill yourself you can die lie or death. There's an Eddie Izzard uh, bit in here someplace that involves cake. 
and toward the time I got closer to 55, which is when I came out, which is when I went and saw my, my gender therapist, I was really starting to get bad psychologically. Uh, I, at one point, checked myself in to the hospital in 2008. I checked myself into a mental ward for a 48-hour observation period because I was suicidal. And then while I was off work, I was laid off in late 2008 and I didn't go back to work uh, in, until the beginning of 2012. So from two, late 2008 to the end of 2011, I was out of work. Uh, as a male, uh, 50, plus 50 male, I couldn't find work. I sent out over 1,200 resumes in that three-year period of time. And I was a psychological mess. I really had just pulled everything inside. I was emotionally detached from myself. I didn't care. And then once I got back to work and was away from my family, I was off on my own. I didn't like what I was doing, but I was by myself a lot. And the urge to explore this part of my life started to come out. Uh, I had done it once or twice before when I was married to my first wife and it was a disaster. Uh, you know, she didn't, she didn't dig it. Even though she kind of led me on to believe that there really wasn't anything wrong with it, she didn't like it. But the first time I really knew for certain, uh, I bought a pair of women's pajamas, Liz Claiborne's, purple, that I still have. I wear them during the summer. And I remember everything up to that point had been a lot of hit and miss of, can I wear this, can't I wear it, is it gonna fit? I didn't know anything about sizing or anything like that. I hadn't looked into it. And I finally did some investigating and looking and I said, I'll try these pajamas. And I took them home and the moment I put them on, they fit perfectly and I remember I did something that was very to me feminine where I just ran my hand down the side of my body and I said these fit and I was so pleased with myself and that was really the moment when I knew there's no fetish going on here this is the real thing I'm, this is who I really am and it took a couple of months more before I got into therapy. And then um, I've been in therapy off and on since 2012, uh, May of 2012. Uh, my wife is aware. I came out to her in 2012. My daughter is aware. I've actually been out in public with my daughter uh, like this. And she's very supportive of it. You do it because, at that point, I had now three roads. I said, well, I can either keep lying to myself and just forget about this and keep hiding it and just go to my death, not being real to myself, or I can die, just say, I've had enough. And the third leg that came up was, or I can transition, I can go ahead with this and become Cassidy. And the moment you take that transition route, the third route of lying to yourself goes completely away. So then it becomes, I can either transition and become a happy, healthy, normal woman, or I can just say the hell with it and kill myself. And I'm hoping to get rid of this path real soon. I'm, I actually made the statement uh, about five or six weeks ago was something I'd never said before. I said, I don't want to die. And to me, that was a tremendous breakthrough because in f 50 years of living, because I began having suicidal impulses when I was like eight or nine years old. In almost 50 years of living, I'd never once said, I don't want to die. And that was kind of a breakthrough for me. And a lot of it is because of who I now am. 
You transition because you have to. You transition because this is really who you are. You're not playing a game. There's no role going on here. You really are this person. This is who I am now. Um, if anything, when I'm presenting as male at work, I'm sort of putting on a face of someone who I'm, I no longer am. This is, this is really me. So that's why you transition, because you have to be yourself. You have to be who you are. You can only hide that for so long. And then it catches up to you. And at some point, you find the three paths and you go, what am I going to do? Am I going to transition? Or am I going to keep lying? Or am I just going to say this is it? There is a high percentage of suicide within the trans community. And a lot of it comes about because during transition, you have so many people who are pushing back at you. You know, you don't find job opportunities. No one wants to talk to you anymore. Uh, you do lose your friends. I've been very lucky in all of these things so far. The, the job part is going to be the scary one because I do worry about that. Am I still going to be able to find gainful employment? The problem is at my age, am I going to be able to find gainful employment? So it's a, a double-edged sword. I don't know, but I don't care because I'm learning to love the person I am now. I never could love myself as a male. I never could. And that's one of the things I'm starting to understand now is that I'm only just beginning to learn how to love myself because I'm learning that I am this person and she is worthy of love. She's worthy of my love first and foremost. And I hope one day she's worthy of someone else's love. Because I'm thinking ahead. And I'm thinking, why not? I still got a lot of life ahead of me. And I might as well be happy living it. And I know at some point I will be very happy living it. But. I want everything any, any girl wants now. I want a good relationship. I want a good partner. I want a wife who's going to love me and hold me and caress me. and uh, We can share chocolate together while we watch uh, science fiction on television. That's why you transition. You transition because you have to be yourself. Everything leading up to this point is, is, is in a way a lie. You're not who you were. You're not who you were meant to be. Now, now I am. I'm getting there. I'm not quite there all the way, but I'm getting there. So, that's it. I hope you found this informative interesting perhaps a little shocking <laughs> I don't know but there's one thing I want you to know and this is something that I've discovered from being one of the few trans women in a group of over 3,000 cis women I'm just like you I want all the same things you do and I'm not any different. I'm just being who I'm supposed to be. So there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to be afraid of. And once you get to know me, you'll find out I'm really a pretty nice and remarkable person. You may even want to date me one day. <laughs> Doesn't mean I want to date you, but we'll see. <laughs> so everyone, just take care, and thank you for watching these videos, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.